वी आर स्टार्टिंग चैप्टर एक्सक्रीटरी प्रोडक्ट्स एंड देयर एलिमिनेशन एंड टिल नाउ वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द ह्यूमन एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम दैट इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू किडनीज देन अ पेयर ऑफ यूरेटर देन यूरनरी ब्लैडर एंड यूरिथ्रा नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द किडनी एंड इट्स स्ट्रक्चर अ किडनी हैज मिलियंस ऑफ ट्यूबुलर स्ट्रक्चर्स कॉम्प्लेक्स ट्यूबुलर स्ट्रक्चर्स विच आर कॉल्ड एज नैफ्रॉन्स and these nephrons they are the functional unit of the kidneys because the function of kidney is to filter the waste so these nephrons they are the functionally uh, or the functional units of kidneys now if we talk about the structure of nephron each nephron has two parts first part it is glomerulus and the other part is a renal tubule so glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries so this is the structure of a nephron it has a cup shaped structure which is known as glomerulus and beside behind it it has a tube like structure which is known as renal tubule now this glomerulus it has many of the capillaries a tuft of capillaries and these capillaries they are formed by afferent arteriole so afferent arteriole it is a branch of renal artery so this it has tuft of arterioles and these arterioles how they are formed they are formed by afferent arteriole now what will happen blood from the glomerulus is carried away now this is afferent arteriole one more arteriole is there that is known as efferent arteriole so afferent arteriole it will bring the blood blood will get filtered in the glomerulus and it will be carried away by efferent arteriole so till now we can say that there are two arterioles one is afferent and the other one is efferent this afferent it will bring the blood and this efferent arteriole it will carry the filtered blood now this is about the glomerulus tubule which is present at the lower part of the glomerulus it is a tube like structure and it is with a double walled cup like structure bowman's capsule so it is begins with the double walled so this is bowman's capsule then these are the glomerulus filtered structure and here it is tubule so it is starting with the cup shaped structure called as bowman's capsule this tubule now it has glomerulus so this is glomerulus this is bowman's capsule and this is tubule now glomerulus along with bowman's capsule this whole structure it is called as malpighian body or renal capsule so this is the structure of a nephron now this tubule it will continue further it will go beyond and it will form a coiled network that is called as proximal convoluted tubule as you are able to see here in this diagram see it is the structure of a nephron it has afferent arteriole now it is bringing the unfiltered blood it is being filtered by the glomerulus and now it is carried back into the body it is through the efferent arteriole so this cup shaped structure it is called as bowman's capsule and this is the tubule so this tubule it has two parts one is proximal convoluted and the other one is distal convoluted so one is coming down this is proximal and that is going upper side it is called as distal convoluted tubule and this distal and proximal convoluted tubule in the bottom it has vasa recta and this limb it is the descending limb because this is coming down and it is going upward direction so it is called as ascending limb of loop of hanley so what we can say here is a u shaped structure in the tubule this u shaped structure it is called as hanley's loop and it has two further parts descending limb and ascending limb so this is the structure of a nephron a diagrammatic representation of a nephron showing blood vessels duct and tubule now about this uh, this pct pct is proximal convoluted tubule and dct is distal convoluted tubule 
hair pin shaped structure u shape which is called as hanley loop and it has ascending limb and descending limb we have just talked in diagram now this ascending limb it will continue as another highly coiled tubular region which is called as distal so this is proximal convoluted and this is distal convoluted tubule now this distal convoluted tubule it what it will do this of many nephrons open into a straight tube which is known as collecting duct so it will open as we are able to see in the diagram also here this uh, this is proximal convoluted tubule then distal convoluted tubule and all these are opening in this collecting duct so we can say that this uh, as it is written here collecting duct so we can say that proximal and distal convoluted tubules now this distal convoluted tubule it will open into a straight tube that is known as collecting duct and many of which converge and open into renal pelvis means ye jo collecting duct hai it will get opened into the renal pelvis now the malpighian corpuscle then pct and dct malpighian corpuscles means glomerulus bowman's capsule and all then proximal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule all these parts of the nephron where they are present because in the previous class we talked about the structure of kidney that kidney has this cortex also region and the medulla region also so in the cortical region all these structures are present whereas the loop of hanley it is present in the medulla region of a kidney so this is kidney it is the cortical cortex region and then medulla region so in the cortex region these parts are present and in the medulla region loop of hanley is present present now if we talk about the nephrons in the nephrons the loop of hanley is too short and now it extends only very little to the medulla such type of nephrons are called as cortical nephrons means in the cortex jo nephrons present hai the loop of hanley is very short and that type of nephron is called as cortical nephrons but in some of the nephrons this loop of hanley is very long and it runs into the medulla so here it is called as juxta medullary nephrons yani we have talked about two type of nephrons cortical nephrons and juxta medullary nephrons which are small in length they are called as cortical nephrons which are long in length they are called as juxta medullary nephrons now efferent arteriole when the blood is getting filtered then this efferent efferent arteriole it will emerge from the glomerulus it will form a fine capillary network around the renal tubule and this type of fine capillary network it is called as peritubular capillaries now a minute vessel of this nap network it runs parallel to the loop forming a u shaped vasa recta so what is present this is the ascending and the descending limb hanley's loop and here this structure it is called as vasa recta and this vasa recta is absent or highly reduced in cortical nephrons because we have talked about the two types of nephrons cortical nephrons mein jo vasa recta hai it is either absent or it is reduced so we have talked about the structure of kidney now the function of kidney is to form the urine so how urine is formed there are three main processes first is glomerular filtration means glomerulus will filter the blood then there is reabsorption when this filtrate it will pass through the ascending and the descending limb and pct and dct then there will be reabsorption of some of the useful substances and then secretion these are the three processes so first step in urine formation is filtration of blood because in we have studied in the introduction of the chapter that whenever metabolism is taking in place in the body many of the nitrogenous waste are produced as human being is terrestrial so the waste product this nitrogenous waste it is produced in the form of uric acid so first means that blood it has uric acid in it and some of the other waste are also present so what is necessary that the filtration of blood should be there and this filtration it is carried out by glomerulus and this type of filtration is called as glomerular filtration so when uh, our blood it is flowing in the body and when it reaches to the kidney 
kidney filters the blood at the rate of 1100 to 1200 ml of blood per minute and means we can say that whatever blood is pumped out by each ventricle so it is one fifth of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute means the ventricle it is pumping the blood and one fifth of this blood it is produced or it is filtered by the kidney in one minute now in the glomerulus region capillaries are present and because of the pressure filtration of blood occurs by the three layers means this glomerulus it is surrounded by three layers endothelium so first of all this endothelium of glomerular blood vessels then epithelium of bowman's capsule and a basement membrane so let us have a structure this is bowman's capsule and here it is glomerulus so what will happen or how the blood filtration will take place this glomerulus it has endothelium it will filter the blood then this bowman's capsule its epithelium will filter the blood and a basement is present in between the two jo bowman's capsule and the glomerulus in between these two there is a layer which is known as basement membrane it will also filter the blood so in this way three layered filtration takes place now the epithelial cells of bowman's capsule this is bowman's capsule and these are the epithelial cells they have a special structure that are known as podocytes they are arranged in such a manner that very small or minute spaces are present which are known as slit pores slit pores from these slit pores the blood will get filtered so blood is filtered from these pores these membranes and now what will happen therefore it is called yes what is happening tri filtration is occurring three layers are present then slit pores are there so blood is filtered very finely through these membranes that almost all the constituents of the plasma except the proteins passed on to the lumen so everything will be passed on to the lumen of the bowman's capsule and that's why it is called as ultra filtration now when the filtration is being done the amount of filtrate formed by the kidney per minute this is known as gfr so how much blood is filtered by the kidney in one minute that is called as gfr this is glomerular filtration rate and in healthy man it is 125 ml per minute means we can say that a human body filters 180 liters per day the filtrate produced is 180 liters per day means and now you can imagine that this much of filtrate is produced and the urine which is removed out of the body that is very less so what is happening to this or what will happen to this filtrate produced this will be reabsorbed by the walls of the tubule so this kidney it has an inbuilt mechanism what it will do it will regulate the filtration rate um, now this is all the so the question that who will control over all this process so this process is uh, takes place in an efficient way and its control is maintained by jga juxta glomerular apparatus and what is this it is a special sensitive region where it is present and how it is formed it is formed by the cellular modifications in the dct means the cells of the dct they are modified and they have formed a region named as jga and the afferent arteriole so there is a contact between the distal dct and afferent arteriole and at this contact jga is formed and this jga it will help in controlling the filtration or to produce the filtrate and whenever there is a fall in gfr glomerular filtration rate then it can activate the jg cells juxta glomerular cells to release renin which can stimulate the glomerular blood flow and thereby gfr back to normal means whenever gfr rate means glomerular filtration rate is more what will happen this jg cells they will become activated and now they will release renin and because of that this filtration rate will become slow and as and when when this gfr is high 
then what will happen renin will not be produced and therefore it will become normal so we can say this is an inbuilt mechanism now what will happen this volume which is produced it will be reabsorbed so see a comparison of the volume we have just talked that 180 liter of the filtrate is produced per day but the urine released it is only 1.5 liter so 